Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to make some awesome vegan meringue using the aquafaba, aquafaba, basically just the chickpea juice that comes in the cans when you get canned chickpeas. So it's a really cool tip to use. So instead of wasting it or throwing it away down the sink, you can use it to make some delicious desserts that are just the best. So in my previous video, I did talk about how I was going to finally get around to showing you guys how to make the awesome meringues using the chickpea aquafaba things from the can. So I'm finally getting around to it. So I'm so excited to share this recipe with you today. So what you'll need today is six table, okay, six tablespoons of the chickpea aquafaba, aquafaba, the juice basically that comes in the chickpea can. Then you're gonna need a quarter, yeah, a quarter of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. Then you're going to need half a cup or 100 grams of granulated sugar. Apparently this works best in helping it to get that meringue nice texture consistency. So rather than using powdered sugar or sugar syrups, use granulated sugar. I'm going to use coconut sugar today. There we go. That is my go-to sugar. It's much healthier than using white sugar or brown sugar or other refined sugars like that as it's low GI. So it doesn't spike your blood sugar as much, meaning that you won't get those highs of like full energy then drop and feel really low and lethargic. And then last but not least, we have half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Yeah, that's it. So we're going to get started in making that right now. So let's get into it. So to begin with, you're going to place the... Not that one. So to begin with, you're going to place the chickpea juice and the cream of tartar into a mixing bowl and you're going to get an electric beater and mix that up on low speed to start with. Just start it on low speed and mix that around and whip it until it becomes foamy. Then from there, you're going to gradually increase the speed until it becomes white and glossy and stiff peaks start to form when you're mixing it around. So we'll get started on doing that now. Okay, so now the meringue is done. I actually forgot to pause it halfway through and tell you what all the rest of the steps were. So basically, after you've added in the chickpea and cream of tartar, you add in the sugar, so you add in the coconut sugar, but you need to add this in slowly. So just add it in gradually. So I just did a little bit at a time. Sometimes I actually added a bit too much. But you just want to add it in gradually. Don't do it all at once. So you just add it in gradually. Keep mixing it on high speed. You want to keep it on really high as you're mixing it through and then after you've mixed all the sugar in you're going to add in the vanilla extract and then after that you're just going to keep mixing on high until nice fluffy peaks have formed so this is the finished result all done lovely stiff peaks as you can see it's not sliding around everywhere so that's when you know it's perfect so now all you need to do you can either pipe it in a piping bag onto a baking tray with baking paper on top now i don't have a piping bag so i'm simply just gonna spoon it onto the baking tray but if you do it may look a little bit more schmick so once you put it on the baking tray you're gonna pop it in the oven for 45 minutes you want to have the oven on 121 degrees celsius which is just 250 degrees fahrenheit then at the 45 minute mark just turn the oven off don't open the door just turn the oven off and leave it in there for one hour so 60 minutes then once it's been 60 minutes you can take them out and let them sit on the side of the table to cool down but do not open the door after the 45 minute mark you want to keep them rising keep them soft and fluffy you must ensure you don't open the door 
I really stress that point because that's really important. So after 45 minutes, leave it to cool for an hour, then you can take them out. So let's get to doing that. Happened. <laughs> Hence why you do not put it on the top shelf of the oven. Noted for next time. So maybe if you guys do it, just keep it on the bottom shelf because you might end up with some black char like mine. Now don't mind that dinging noise in the background. It's just our fan up the top there. We're trying to get the smell away from the house because it smells of burnt food, like burnt toast and that. So we're trying to get rid of the smell of it. It's doing a slow job, it still smells really like a burnt food, like, oh, it just stains the house. I don't mind that noise coming from the fan up there. We would open a window, but hence it is smoky outside, so of all the days to burn food, I burnt food on a smoky day when you can't air out of the house, because it just puts more smoke in. So I have gone for round two of trying to make these again. So I've made another batch. Fingers crossed this one doesn't burn this time, but we'll soon find out. So these were the ones that were on the bottom shelf. They would have turned out okay had the oven door not been opened when we took the other ones out. So they kind of were like souffles that just didn't rise. They're just flat now, so lesson learned. This is why you keep the door oven door closed, otherwise they end up like pancakes. Now this is the second batch that I made, so they came out a lot better than the first, thankfully. However, they didn't rise as well, and I think that's just because of the oven we have. Um, our seal on the oven doesn't hold very well, so a lot of the air escapes, and I know these have to be kept at a certain temperature in order to rise, otherwise <laughs> they're like souffle and just don't rise. They tend to deflate, as you can see. But they taste amazing still honestly yeah so good so they were sort of they were weird in a sense that they tasted good <laughs> they just don't look like those lovely inflated meringues but i will try again when we get a new oven and see how they go then so there you have it guys this is the meringue it turned out actually really well because honestly the journey to get to this was huge so we started off as you saw it burnt and i was like all right I have to readjust what I was doing. So top shelf was not a good idea for the oven. So I then changed it to the bottom shelf, which worked out well. But the second time around, I didn't cook them long enough because I was too scared of burning them like I did the first time. So I cooked them for only half an hour because I was like, oh, I'll just see how it goes because I wasn't sure with my oven if they would burn again. But no, they were right. They came out, but they were too soft. So when you tried to pull them off the baking paper, they just became like mush. So that you sort of scraped them off with a spoon. They tasted still fantastic. It just weren't proper meringue. So the third time round, it's like third time's a charm. I was like, oh, it finally worked. So here we are, the meringue. I know it's a little deflated. Our oven doesn't have a proper seal on it, like I said before. So a lot of the heat escapes, so it doesn't keep that constant hot temperature that it needs. So when we get a new oven, I'm going to try again. But at least I know that it works the third time around. I was so proud of myself. It was just a huge win for me, even though it was a cooking fail. It was still a win for me. I learned a lot, so... If you want more white colored meringues, say you want a different color, just use a different color sugar because I use brown sugar that came out more cream colored. I just wanted to use coconut sugar because it's a little healthier. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm sorry it didn't turn out as perfectly as I hoped it would. I will definitely be sure to do another video on it when I have a different oven to show you guys the proper version of what the meringue should look like. So until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did like it and you had a good good time watching, had a good laugh at my fails, please give it a thumbs up for me. And if you want to see more videos of mine in the future, feel free to subscribe to our fam, our tribe, our squad here on YouTube by hitting that subscribe button down below in the corner and making sure to hit that bell button right next to it to keep up to date with future videos of mine. Thank you so much for sticking out this whole video with me. And if you'd like to, just to make my day, if you feel free to share some of your cooking fails in the comments below. I would love to hear about them. They'd really lift my spirit. So I know that sometimes we do just go through times when things don't work out the way we planned. I'm thinking of calling them cookies instead meringue cookies rather than just normal meringues. Anywho, I hope to see you guys in my future videos and until then, enjoy the rest of your week, days and year, months and etc. <laughs> Bye!